2025 is already crazy with AI developments and in this video I'll only cover a part of the news. Get ready for more news videos in the next days. Let's get started. Let's get started with the SANA model, which looks really cool and tackles an interesting problem. First of all, let's check out some examples here. You can see the quality is pretty interesting. It's maybe not the best model you have ever seen. It might not be on par with Flux, but it has the benefit that it can render very fast. So a low resolution image 1024 by 1024 can be rendered in about a second. That is pretty amazing. And you can also render high resolution images 4096 by 4096. That of course needs more resources and will be slower. But the good thing is that depending on what you want to render, you can use different kind of resources and that is a huge benefit you can see here generation latency for that with the flux depth model really high the sana 1.6 and 0.6 model very low down here this has been released recently under the apache license that is pretty good because that means it is open source and as you can see here, for a 4096 by 4096 image, you do need a 22 gigabyte GPU, but that is also a really high resolution. For the lower resolution, you don't need that much. You see here, Apache 2 license, that is pretty amazing. And also, this has been released for ComfyUI. There's also sample workflows here that you can use so that you can use this right away. That is pretty cool. And if you want to try it out before you download anything, you have here an online demo that you can use. You can just write here a prompt. There's also some options here that you can set up for the resolution and so on to get a better grip if you actually like that model or not. And it looks pretty amazing, I would say. Next, let's check out some developments in the 3D AI model creation. Now here first, we have something called consistent flow distillation. Now they want to tackle two problems with that. The first one is that often with text to 3D, the models don't look really good and have not that great details. And the second one is that often you get very similar results that don't give you enough variation. So the way they want to tackle this, as far as I understand that is that they use a gradient where the gradient is starting with all of the possible 3D shapes that could result from your prompt and then try to guide the creation process along the best path to give you a nice looking model that also has a lot of interesting details in there. The second way they try to approach this is to instead of using just one perspective to create a 3D model from that, they use virtually different angles of that model. And as you can see here, this kind of rotation. And at the same time, they add a guided noise to that that will improve the details and also how good that model looks. And as you can see here, you get some really beautiful results from that. I couldn't really see in the text what they mean by 3D model, if this is actually a polygon model or it is just a Gaussian splitting. But yeah, it is a text to 3D process, which is pretty amazing. In the lower part of the page, you can also see that they show different results. And in that case, you can also see the diversity of the results. And that is here also the important part that you get a rich choice with very nice details for each of these creations. And I love how creative the models are. I love how creative the textures are. So this is really a way into the future. Yesterday, I showed you in a short this research. It's called Facelift and it is a research by Adobe and the University of California. And what they do is that you can use a single image from the frontal view, a portrait, and that will create then a 3D shape. Now, this is actually 
a Gaussian splatting that is created, not a 3D model, not a polygon model, but as we've seen, you can also now generate from a Gaussian splatting actually 3D data that you can use afterwards. So this is still going into that direction of giving us 3D shapes. And as you can see here, the details of that are really amazing. Also the head shape, the hair detail, all of that is amazingly impressive, especially coming from just one image and understanding the shapes. Because often in the past, we had the problem that we had kind of a 3D shape, but then the backside looked really bad and was either flattened or kind of a strange shape. Now here, as you can see, this can actually figure out something that looks anatomically correct and fits to that image. And of course, then afterwards, as you can see here, you can also do animation in the process. Not quite sure how they did the animation, but all of this looks really, really cool. Now let's talk a little bit about graphics cards because Nvidia has announced their 50 series. And this of course has been out for a week around, but I wanna give you my five cents to that. Now, all of that looks pretty amazing, but they also made some pretty bold claims, especially about the 5070, which is supposed to be as quick as a 4090. And they are doing a little bit of the marketing drumming here because what they actually showed was more of the DLLS support for video gaming so that you can get a nice frame rate by using AI to give you more frame rate and then also of course more affluent gameplay but it doesn't really mean that you get the full power of a 4090. For that we actually have here a pretty interesting post that compares both of these cards. As you can see here the memory size with 12 gigabytes is pretty low especially if you want to use that with AI but at the same time, if you use older models or maybe the newer models are more economic about the VRAM you have to use, this might still worth your while, especially because the price is pretty low for that card. From what I've seen, around 570 euros or $600, around about that, I think. And when you look at the lower part here, you can also see here the teraflops and below that the AI tops which is trillions of operations per second. Now here, again, this is lower than the 4090, but it is important to point out here that the 4090 has 1,300 21, while the 5070 has 988, which is almost there. So it is a very respectable value still, especially for that much lower price. If you have a lot of money to spend, of course, you can go for the 5090, which is the powerhouse, the best graphics card that Nvidia has to offer for the casual user that is of course and it starts at $2,000 so it's not exactly cheap but you get a lot of oomph for that. So when we look at the lower part of the website you have here again a comparison to the 4090. You can see here that this has 32 gigabytes of VRAM. Now that is really good for the future of AI rendering to render these larger models and be able to do a lot of amazing things. As you can see, the 4090 only features 24 gigabytes. So I think they have smelt what is cooking and want to support AI and AI models a lot more with their best graphics cards. Also, when you look here again for the AI, AI tops. Again, these are the trillions of operations per seconds. You can see that the 4090 has 1,321, while the 5090 has 3,352. That is a huge improvement over that and will give you some really good uh, performance for AI renderings, but also for all kinds of other AI applications. And that is really amazing and might be well worth the $2,000. If you want to go really deep into AI development and experimentation, NVIDIA has updated their Digits project. Now this puts a supercomputer 
on your desk and this is no joke because this is really powerful and let's look here a little bit at what you're getting for that so first of all let's scroll down here a little bit one thing that is really interesting here a gb10 super chip that provides a petaflop of power that is pretty powerful to start with but better than that you can also see that their project digits features 128 gigabytes of unified coherent memory which means that that memory is shared between the cpu and the gpu so you have a lot of space to load your models and on top of that it has a four terabyte nvm so that you can also have very fast access to all of the models and a lot of space on that drive to store and load these models on top of that you can also then seamlessly deploy your project on the nvidia dgx cloud and all of that comes with a lot of developer software already loaded on the device when you get that of course, all of these tools, all of that power has its price. It's starting at $3,000. But keep in mind that is for a complete workstation, basically a supercomputer on your desktop with all of the software that you need to run that. However, I want to point out here, this is not for casual users. This is for developers. So don't think that you can just run your ComfyUI on Windows on there. This is more for the expert users out there who wants to get their fingers wet with all the AI development research and experimentation. But for that, I think it's a pretty amazing bundle. Next, I want to show you Video FCK. This is kind of a strange name, to be honest, if you pronounce it differently. And this is also a very interesting project because what it provides is AI powered video narration. So you can use any kind of video input and then this will narrate what is happening in the video on the screen which has a lot of applications for example helping people with disabilities who can't see the screen but also to give you a narration a description of what is going on and while this may be not providing the best voices here you can do speech to speech afterwards that so you can use any kind of voice on that project for example 11 labs allows speech to speech to use it with your voice or with any kind of other voice you want. So that makes it really useful and gives it a lot of interesting applications for that. And as you can see down here, this is an open source tool that you can try out and use for your projects. I also want to show you this project called Astral. Now this is an AI agent that goes onto the internet and there, for example, on Reddit, it can log into the page as a user. Then it can figure out how to use the page. You see all these boxes here where it tries to figure out what kind of function each part of that website has. It looks for content that is good for the brand or the product and then replies to that content, of course, promoting that product in kind of like a human way. and. I'm not sure this is a great idea because basically what that is is spam on the internet and it kind of like goes into this AI echo concept or that internet kind of concept where bots are replying to bots and all the content is created by AI. So that is more in the area of the darker future of AI. And of course, spam bots are illegal. So I'm not quite sure what they are thinking with this project. But yeah, it is also good to know about the existence of projects like that so that we can navigate the AI space or also maybe come up with other ideas, for example, how to block this, how to figure out this is a bot and then automatically remove it because things like that are really not okay. At the same time, there's also an open source project basically doing the same thing. So let's check out this video here where you can see the code running and this is going on Instagram. It is logging in as a user. Of course, you need a user account for that. And then afterwards, it's 
finding relevant posts and it is creating comments under these posts as we're going to see in a second and it's doing that to the content in the post but in a way that makes sense and also in a human-like way so when you look here for example at what is written here we have this post up here so we can see the post here with the image some text in it some text here in the post about pet console the young texas fan who was crying and then the eyes writing absolutely the passion the tradition the unexpected twists it's more than a game it's a shared experience that binds community so that is a comment that is pretty good for that content but of course it's ai generated so it's still spam but it is an interesting reply now for that i also have to say on the one side it's bad because it is spam it is creating content that nobody needs in this kind of like example of just filling the internet with useless stuff from sources that are not people so why do you even need that but on the positive side i have to say in a example like this I can imagine how this, for example, could use, let's say, my knowledge, my experience about how I would think about different topics. And to give you an example of what I mean by an AI agent going out and replying to comments instead of me, here is an example from perplexity. Because I have a lot of comment online as a YouTube creator, the AI can find a lot of information for me. And this is actually pretty good. So I said, what would Olivia Sarka say about the future of AI in art? Make a list of arguments. And when you look at these arguments, this is actually what I would say. And I have actually used this to prepare speeches for conferences or panel talks to prepare myself on the questions that are going to be asked also to make it easier for me to give me keynotes for a speech so actually this is really how i would reply to that question these are great insights and i can see an ai replying instead of me to comments that ask about different opinions different insights or questions about how different tools would work so it might even have also a positive side and because this is open source, you can go to the GitHub page and you have here the information on how to run this yourself if you want to try that out. I also want to address a little bit why I haven't been more active recently on YouTube. Now, the thing is, I have worked a lot. I have been very active on Twitter, so maybe I burned a little bit too much time there, but I also have been active in the AI space. For example, being on panel talks, speaking with AI artists. Today, I made a pretty good interview interview with a really amazing team working with AI to create advertisement. I will show you that interview as soon as I get the data for their background footage that I want to show you. So I have been super busy. I just had a little bit less time to create YouTube, but I want to make much more content again, getting back to my daily schedule, also creating more shorts, especially now that I have a video editor that can help me to create, for example, the short content. So get ready for some pretty amazing stuff. Thanks for watching and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Bye.